Hi, my name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and I want to use this video to really go back to the question of Earth and Jupiter. Earth is a planet, Jupiter is a planet, but if Earth was to orbit Jupiter, is it actually going to be still a planet or is it going to be a moon? What's the actual deal with that? If it formed there, if we went and placed it there, what would it actually be? Now, before we get there, I just want to note that I have lots of extra videos in the member section. So if you find this video or all the videos interesting or helpful, and you just generally want to help support the channel, then do consider becoming a member. There's obviously lots of videos there and lots of other benefits as well. So thank you. Now, before we get there, we probably need to define what a planet is. So planets generally orbit stars. The Earth orbits the Sun. That's fairly obvious. So does Jupiter and all the other planets we have. Um, planets don't always have to orbit stars, though. If you've seen some of my other videos about fr free-floating planets, rogue planets, these are planets that don't have stars. And they can form like that, potentially, or they can get thrown out of their system, again, potentially, and they then have no stars. So that's not always the case, but generally, let's just assume for this case here that planets orbit stars. Now, so do dwarf planets. Dwarf planets and asteroids also orbit stars as well. So what's the difference between a dwarf planet asteroid and a planet? When's it actually going to become a planet? Well, there's obviously lots of arguments about this at the moment, but the there is um, three kind of definitions, really. And the first one is that they orbit stars. That's fine. But so do asteroids and dwarf planets. Now, the next criteria, really, is that they have sufficient mass to assume hydrostatic equilibrium. What on earth does that mean? Well, it means they become spherical. Once they get big enough that their own gravitational kind of force it kind of molds them into a spherical shape. They can no longer have bits sticking out of them at different places. They can't be potato shaped because actually their gravitational force of their, their self gravity essentially makes them mold them into a more spherical shape. So it evens out the mass distribution. So that's one of the criteria. However, dwarf planets are also spherical. So is Pluto. So they still hit those criteria. Now, the biggest one where Pluto falls short and other dwarf planets that are in the asteroid belt is they don't clear out their neighborhood. So if you've got a planet, once they get big enough, they clear out any asteroid or smaller material in their orbit. There's no other stuff orbiting with them. Now, again, it's worth noting that's actually not always the case because Jupiter specifically has Trojan moons, their co-orbital moons or asteroids, they share the same orbit, but they're due to other orbital dynamics. So we'll ignore that, but they generally will clear out an orbit. And Pluto doesn't do that. Ceres doesn't do that, which is another large dwarf planet. So this is kind of like the, the mostly the, the cutoff point for planets. So now we know what a planet is. So let's go to moons. So moons orbit planets. So if you can take a smaller object and you place it in orbit around a planet, that is then a moon, basically. We have our moon, Jupiter has lots of moons, so does Saturn. Now generally, well, it's not generally, moons are smaller than planets. If they were bigger than a planet, then that would be a planet. And then the other smaller object, depending on their, their mass ratio really, could be a moon or it could be a planet. So moons are smaller than planets by pure definition, essentially. However, the key difference really is their size difference. So here you've got Jupiter and Io, one of its kind of inner Galilean moons. And compared to Jupiter, it's small. I mean, it's not a small moon, it's quite big. But actually, in comparison to the, the planet, it's much, much smaller. So here, key difference is size between the two. If you've got a, a moon, a smaller object orbiting a much bigger object, then the barycenter, which is the center of mass of the, that two-body system, is very close or even inside the planet. That means that as the moon is going around the barycenter, the planet makes a small wobble. It's how we actually detect exomoons sometimes, by the wobble of the star. It does the same thing to planets. The smaller the moon, the lower the wobble you get, and the, the smaller the orbit that that planet takes around the barycenter. So the barycenter will be very close to the planet if the size difference is big. Now, if the size differences are 
small, as in like they're almost comparable in size. Let's say we have two Jupiters, two Earths, whatever. Then the baryocenter is going to kind of going to be in the middle of that system, and then you end up with a binary or double planet. Now Pluto and Charon, they're pretty well. They are actually a, a double dwarf planet. They're not exactly the same size, but their mass ratios are not that dissimilar. And they are almost in this sort of configuration here. So once you get to that size, then it's not really going to be a moon planet system. But if you have a much smaller one, it'll be a planet and a moon. So it comes down to the differences in sizes between the two. So if your primary planet, in this case here, Jupiter or a gas giant, is going to be large enough, then your size difference can still be quite significant. So you could actually have a planet orbiting it. And is it going to be a planet? Is it going to be a moon? Well, in this case here, Jupiter is about 318 times more massive than Earth. That's a considerable size difference or mass difference between the two. That means the barycenter for that system, if they were orbiting each other orbiting the, a common center of mass is going to be very close to Jupiter. That means the Earth is going to appear to go around Jupiter as opposed to them both orbiting a common center of mass at a similar sort of distance. So, despite Earth actually being a planet, it's still going to behave like a moon, like dynamically on its orbit. You put it on an orbit around Jupiter, that's it, it's actually going to be a moon. It isn't going to be a planet anymore. Because the size difference is a lot, well, it's a lot, lot smaller than Jupiter. So it actually behaves like a moon. It's a moon. That's it. Now, the interesting thing here is, OK, we can't really do anything about that in our own system. But let's say maybe an Earth-like object actually formed around Jupiter or it got captured. If it got too close to Jupiter, Let's say for some bizarre reason, Earth's orbit was changed, it moved further out and it encountered Jupiter. It could have been gravitationally captured. And at that point, then it could remain possibly on a stable orbit with an atmosphere. And it wouldn't really be habitable because Jupiter is too far away. However, there are plenty of gas giants been discovered around other stars that are in the habitable zone. Those gas giants are not habitable, but it is possible that those could have Earth-like exomoons orbiting them. So they wouldn't be planets, but they could be planet-sized. In fact, a lot of these gas giants are even bigger than Jupiter. So you could actually have quite significant size moons bigger than Earth. You could even have super-Earths orbiting these Jupiters in the habitable zone. So the potential for them to exist is there. We haven't detected them yet but the potential is there. Now, the interesting thing about these is that, okay, we're on a Earth-like planet orbiting a gas giant in the habitable zone. The equilibrium temperature of the planet could quite likely support life on its surface, but this, the climate, the seasons is gonna be very, very different to Earth. It will go behind the planet, possibly. So you're gonna get very long days, nights, it might be tidally locked. The seasons and climates might change quite rapidly. So it's going to be very, very different than what we would get on Earth. But overall, fairly generically, they could be habitable. And if we ever find any of these, these could be quite exciting, actually. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or ideas for future videos, then just leave them down in the comments below.